This particular video that we're going to introduce to you now um, was filmed on a handy cam. It was old technology using tape. It was zoomed up to the maximum zoom. The animal was at least 200 meters from the person that was filming it. And it was about four or five in the afternoon. It was just on dusk. So it's a little bit grainy. It's a little bit out of focus, but there's certainly a lot more footage there for you to have a look at and consider what we believe to be a mainland thylacine, possibly a subspecies of the Tasmanian thylacine. The first one, just like walking along, and the first thing I noticed was I probably would have been about 50 to 100 metres away. I was sitting in a car, had the binoculars, and I thought, wow, that's an unusual looking animal. And there's stripes on its hindquarters, stripes along its tail. But what got me was the head, like a prehistoric looking head on it. I was just totally amazed and then um, I was going out to this particular place probably I'd say about two or three times a week. I got a camcorder, took the camcorder out there, the first time that's what I got. How many times have you been out there on separate occasions oh, and witnessed goodness. these striped animals? I would say at least a dozen. Wow. At least a dozen. I probably went out there over a period of I'd say 12 months. On one occasion I saw a, I'm assuming a female with two pups and they're just like, you know, following her around and I remember her actually lying down and then she got up. Mm -hmm. These two little guys were lighter than her but they both had stripes and um, yeah, and they sort of went over to her and then she stood up and they just all wandered, they wandered off over to the left hand side, up into the scrub. And back scrub. up into the scrub. Yeah. Because there, it's very, very desolate. There are no houses anywhere near that place. Okay. It's not the only one I have seen out there that I have seen. And they've all had quite stripes. A few. Yeah, yeah. All the same characteristics as that one. Yep. The long straight tail, the stripes, um, the big head, just a very bizarre looking head. I know one time I um, did see one which was going the same way as this one here. And then behind or over further, there was a fox. And I remember thinking, you know, but he was coming from the opposite way. I'm thinking now, what's going to happen if these two <laughs> meet? And, but they didn't even cross paths. So you actually witnessed a fox. Yeah, a fox. And, one and of a these, thylacine yeah, at the yeah, same time. But they were like a fair distance apart. They would have been a good hundred meters. But they were in the same yeah, general area. Yeah. And this one, this thylacine, he was a lot bigger and broader than, yep. than the fox. The fox had the typical bushy tail, pointy nose, the red colour and this this guy here, yeah, he was the brownie grey, um, the long straight tail and a different gait about him altogether than the fox too, whereas a fox would trot, but this one um, sort of like amble. As you can see at first, the animal doesn't appear to be limping. It's a bit of a pity because it does interfere with the gait to a degree of the animal, but it certainly doesn't appear to be walking like a fox walks. The interesting part about the sighting and all the other sightings that the lady had in the area is that every animal she sighted had stripes. Another one that I saw too when um, I was driving and I thought what I saw was a dead wallaby on the side of the road. As I went past it, it got up and it was actually what I believed to be a thylacine and I don't know if he was sick or injured and he had blue eyes and he just got up and he ambled across the road like a real awkward gait about him and went off into the bush. And I remember thinking, oh, I would love to <laughs> stop the car, get out and, and try and track him down. But I was a bit worried that, you know, well, you know, would he attack me? <laughs> How's his reaction going to be to that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, he, he was long straight tail um, and, and stripes on his tail. And I reckon he had a couple of stripes on his back. The really big, ugly, ugly head and another. So how far from the front of the car? Oh, my God, he would have only probably been a couple of feet from me, about five feet in front of me. So you got a really oh, good yeah. look at him. Yeah, yeah, I was like basically right beside him. With this particular animal in this footage, I'm quite convinced myself that it's not a fox for a couple of reasons. Um, when the animal first comes into the screens, it does appear to have its rear hock go flat when it steps, um, which would give the indication that it has that typical rear foot like a thylacine. It's got an incredibly thick neck and looks very stocky in its build. And it also has that very long, stiff tail that looks like an extension of the backbone, essentially. It doesn't really move. It certainly doesn't sway side to side like a dog. I think you can quite confidently say this is not a dog in this video. And the only other thing it could be would be a fox. One of these creatures, 
back up against a reed and it sprayed like a cat. It, it, like, I, like I said, you know, I was Googling how foxes urinate and they urinate the same as a normal dog, right. pop their leg. But this thing backed up against one of those reeds there and just sprayed like a male cat would. I know what um, a fox and a mangy fox looks like. And these guys are totally different, totally different. And, and the bands were actually quite thick, not thin stripes, so they were like bands. My good friends Adrian and Tam from Animals Anonymous were kind enough to put me on to the man whose family saw the thylacine in our first video. And we do continue to get sightings through Adrian and Tam from time to time when they're doing their presentations and, and people come up and start talking to them and they trust them so they open up to them and they share their stories. Everywhere from the blue tongue lizard story in my backyard to a strange bird and occasionally I get something that's almost cryptozoological. We've had a few uh, striped animals uh, reported to us and well what people describe to me seems like what you'd imagine the thylacine to be described as. I mean people that, the, the things that stand out to me where you have sightings of more than one person, uh, people that know what a cat, know what a dog, know what a fox looks like and, and, and they don't know what this animal was. People do often come up to me and tell me stories about what they saw, whether it was five years ago, whether it was, you know, that day. Um, people always, people like to share things and they get excited when they've seen something that maybe nobody else has seen before, so they do get really excited. I think everybody should have an open mind and animals are very good at camouflaging or hiding or not wanting to be seen. So if an animal doesn't want to be seen, it won't, it won't show itself and I think people really need to have an open mind of what's out there because there's plenty of um, open bushland or you know plenty of areas where people can't get to. Since we released our video last week I've picked up an extra 20 odd sightings from around Adelaide alone. Now none of these sightings were previously known in a public forum at all. None of them have been reported to the newspapers not even to the South Australian Museum. These people are coming forward because they feel more comfortable because they now realise that not everybody is out there to laugh at them for listening to what they've described as a sighting of an unusual animal. We are interested, we will take you seriously and we will not ridicule you for being honest and sharing your story with us.